From football to a new sport on the block here in Colorado. For the first time ever, eSports is now officially sanctioned and it is the fastest growing sport in the nation. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn tonight going 360 with part one of our series on the rise of competitive video gaming. Smash Brothers guys, get with your team real quick. Step into a computer classroom after school these days. We're gonna do a practice. And you might feel like you're stepping into a different world. Get no, no. <laughs> it's awesome to see a rise in it. Die, Brian. It's a big step in the right direction, in my opinion. It's really cool. I mean, it's really new. Oh, We're pretty competitive. There's a lot of trash talk involved. National television joining. Even the lingo is hard to keep up with. A lot of his aerials are hard to get out, except his nair. Classrooms all across the state of Colorado are now becoming open your horizons to most of the characters. Competitive arenas. You guys are for esports. I love playing Mario Kart, so I'm really excited for this year. I play Smash Bros, Splatoon, and Mario Kart. For the first time ever, this fall, esports is now an officially sanctioned sport under Chasa, the Colorado High School Activities Association. To take these games that kids are, are probably already playing and and to, to bring it under the Chasa umbrella has just been huge. Such a positive change in so many kids' lives. It takes a tremendous amount of skill and dexterity to be able to play these games at the level that these kids are playing at. So let's step into the world of esports and go 360 with the players, the coaches, the strategy and teamwork involved, the debate about whether it belongs, and we start with its explosive popularity. It's a great opportunity by getting this like legitimacy. We're getting more kids in interested. <laughs> At Cherry Creek High School, there are more than 160 players and other students involved. We have people that stream to our Twitch channel. We have people that run our social media and design our website. Rocket League, we have to set it up this week. At Highlands Ranch, get everything organized. 50 plus. This year, we just rostered our 51st kid. Go! And even smaller schools like Strive Prep in Denver have growing rosters. 30 kids coming in. The kids are always in here and they're competing and they're setting up on their own and they're 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 going at it. One of the best things about esports is the barrier to entry is low and the cost of adding a team minimal. It's really accessible because all you need is a computer. We got our jerseys, we got everything. And the mindset is changing too. At first I was like, we have a video game club and they're like, no no no, it's it's different than that. As a traditional sports coach, I thought this is crazy. I mean, I've my own teenagers who play video games, and that seemed like just kind of a distraction. Ryan Hollingshead was a head football coach for years and is now the principal at Ponderosa High. I have usually three to four teams. In and he is wholeheartedly behind. You're playing goal team. His eSports team. I was 100% against it. Ah. And within a year, I was 100% behind it. To get kids connected to the school, to get them to be part of something bigger than themselves, you know, and, and to learn some of those life skills. And they're totally getting that in eSports. <laughs> Jumping in all the way. What's not to think like how big this could get with opportunities for scholarships. So this is definitely like big. With huge cash prizes at the pro level and even college scholarships, eSports has hit center stage. Ponderosa High even has a direct connection to Western Colorado University in Gunnison. Their eSports team actually talks to our eSports team. They come through on our screen and actually give us advice and help us out. The opportunities are endless. For Smash last season, if you were the tournament winner, you'd get a scarf. In the last Olympics, one of the announcers said, Esports doesn't need the Olympics, but the Olympics needs esports. And just like other sports and activities, there are tryouts and eligibility requirements. You're not allowed to have two Ds or below at any time. It pushes you to have like good grades for esports. You can't have even one F to play. We do have tryouts just like any other sport. Kids can earn letters just like any other sport. Sounds like it, sounds like it. This is very fun and it's a very cool opportunity to see people grow and actually be confident in something that they're good in. And the strategy is real. I definitely have a big voice and I love talking through coaching, obviously. This character's neutral is really good. Cherry Creek team captain Lux Vang. A character that you typically want to, you know, combo. Sees huge similarities between esports and traditional sports. Learn the mechanics of a game. Like It's kind of like a baseball uh, player. Like uh, you use a different type of bat or, you know, whatever it may be. 
We come in here probably three hours before the game starts. We'll talk uh, strategy. Pace yourself against this Donkey Kong. Any game is 70% mental. What does it do? Everyone's like, it's eSport or real sport. And I'm like, yes, except it's less of a physical sport and more of a mental and strat strategic sport. We also will scout the other teams in schools to see what kinds of strategies they're using so that we can try to adapt our strategy to better match the opponent that we're playing. As for teamwork involved, ask those who play and they'll tell you it's off the charts. Teamwork's definitely a big part. If one person's slacking, then the whole game is on the line. The whole match is on the line. In terms of communication, at least for Rocket League, you keep pressure on the ball. You need more communication for that than I think you do in a lot of like regular sports. Just like football, baseball, soccer, basketball, anything else. I do definitely feel like I'm part of a team when playing any of these games. These aren't students who are crushing marshmallows or mushrooms. These are students who are showing their ability to strategize. <laughs> to work as a team, to communicate effectively. It starts here. Whoa, that was tense. There is so much ground to cover with the growth of esports, so our 360 in-depth reporting continues tomorrow morning on Denver 7 as we further break down the stereotypes, myth bust about girls in the sport, and explore the idea of big money careers for students after college. That's tomorrow morning at 6.30. For now, I'm Russell Haythorne.